welcome to Heart to Home Bible Study. We are kicking off a new series new. tonight. Yes. Uh, we are now studying how to prosper in tough times. And I think this is really powerful in the day and age that we're living in uh, because we're experiencing some tough times. Right, and prospering, Michelle, actually means more than just getting money. Yes. It means having good health. It means having good relationships. Yes. It means being healed of all your diseases, sickness, and infirmity. Yes. That's prospering. Yes. It's a shalom. It means nothing missing. And so that's what we're going to be getting into. That is so good. Because I think a lot of times when th people hear prosperity... Right. The first thing you automatically think of is money. And God is so much more than money. That's He's right. so much more depth and care than just money. And so tonight we're going to be diving into the prosperity and tough It's going times. to be good. It's and really it's going good. to be something that I would recommend. You get pencil, paper, or pen if you're up into the real <laughs> world. And then also get your Bibles out because we're going to yes. be doing scriptures because we're going to be understanding how to prosper in tough times. That's good. Now, the first thing we need to understand is that we have to believe what the Word of God says. That's true. That doesn't, and nothing is going to work if we just try to do it on ourselves. So, as as we have said in our previous studies, you got to make certain it's in your eyes, it's in your ears, it's in your heart, and it's coming out of your mouth Amen. daily. Amen. And so you've got That's to good. do that because we need to take the promises of Jesus. And the word says all of his promises are. Yes and amen. That means yes, I receive it. Amen. So be it. It's yes. done. So we have to take that. And we have to understand that no matter what the circumstances, yeah. I, like you, have looked at the news this past week, <laughs> which I sometimes do not recommend, uh, and they're forecasting even more bad news. Yes. Well, that's what the world wants you to think is yours, but it's not. And we're going to be getting into that, so let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, because our prosperity... Our whole life is not based in the world's economy or their ideas. That's true. It's based on the Word of God. <laughs> that is so true. And we're not subject to tough times. Amen. I, I, I want you to have that just sink into your spirit today. Right. You are not subject to tough times. That's you know, right. you might have tough times going on around you, but you do not have to have the tough time overcome you. We see that example with Isaac. Abraham, right. Isaac, so the son of Abraham, he was surrounded by famine. He was surrounded by tough times. But in the midst of tough time, he increased a hundredfold. And I know for us, when we receive gifts from people such as yourself, or even when we tithe, which is constantly, yes. we say, Father, we thank you that this seed will increase in the year of famine. And that's how we need to start looking at this, that even though the world is saying, yeah, we're going to have famine, we're going to have a lack. Well, that's what the world says. But even if I'm in the midst of it, I'm not subject to it. I love it. There's this one preacher that I love to listen to. And he said, you can go and have your famine. You can go and have your lack. I don't, yeah, I'm not going to have that. Have to have and it. you have to have that kind of confidence and boldness to stand up and say, okay, world, you can have your, your breakdown. You can have your lack. You can have your That's not right, enough. I'm not going to have it. But I'm not going to have not enough in my household. Well, I know my mama used to say, you know, grandma. Well, and she grew up in the Great Depression. In I the middle of the Depression. thought about her so much because I've joked a couple of times. I'm like, ha, 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 yeah, we're living in the Great Depression. I'm like, no, 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 it's no. It's not even close, but still it's the comprehension. Exactly. You don't have enough. But she used to say, and I'm going to try to write it down, when the going gets tough, Denise, the tough gets going. Ooh. She used to tell me that all the time. And if you are older like I, you've heard that <laughs> phrase. But this week, it's taken on even new meaning for yes. me. Because I'm going to get tough on the Word of God. Ooh, that's good. Because the Word of God will forever stand. It's a strong foundation. Yes. And we're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to know that I have been told since I was beginning in the Baptist church back in 1960-something. I'm not going to give you my age. <laughs> But in 1960-something, we were told that Jesus was coming soon, that the end times were, were right then. Well, I've lived 60-plus years, and he hasn't returned yet, but that doesn't mean we're not in the last of the we're last days. We're always one day closer. That's right. Amen. And that's what the scripture is actually saying. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it says, This know also that in the last days, the last days, we're in the end of the end, mm -hmm perilous times shall come. 
You know, and I know, I remember, and some of you may be watching, 1988. 88 reasons why Jesus will come back in 1988. I missed that year. <laughs> she missed it, but I'll tell you what. She was part of my anxiety and my tears. Yeah. Because we had just gotten married, and I wanted a Bambino. And I thought, oh my gosh. And I not, wasn't coming. <laughs> she wasn't coming. But I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to bring a child mm. into our family. Well, guess what? We continue to live our lives. Yeah. But it's... It's still the last of the last days. And it says these last days will be perilous. So, Michelle, I'm going to tell you a couple of definitions of perilous. Please do. Because you're sounds, homeschooled. It sounds okay. so exciting. Okay, here But we go. everybody's homeschooled now. Does that make it a little it bit really of validity? Does. It really does. You know, I actually, I've received several phone calls saying now they know why I can't do math. Okay. Um, because <laughs> they're homeschooling their children and they get it now. Um, oh. But no, I'm loving, I'm loving the fact that everyone is a homeschool That's mom. That's right. Yes. I don't know if all homeschool moms are really happy about about it, but it's awesome. okay. So but cool. perilous. Let me give you a definition of perilous. Okay. It means difficult, fun, dark, wow, dangerous. Here we go. <laughs> furious, fierce, hard to take, troublesome, savage, and tough. Sounds delightful. Doesn't that make you go, oh, I'm so uplifted on tonight's Bible study. I walked away from this just full of joy. Full of joy okay. because I'm in tough times. Okay. But I Perilous. want you to understand that even though we're seeing this, don't yeah. let the natural come and swipe out your supernatural. That's good. That's good. You don't have to let yeah. the perilous come into your household, into into your life. You can say, you know what? Like I said, you're going on around me, but you That's don't right. have to come into my dwelling. But we also have to remember the promises are yours. Jesus laid his life down for you on that cross. He spilt his blood. He went to the grave and he rose again yes. so that all of the promises are yes and amen. But we have to do some things. We have to stand on the word of God. Yes. We have to use our faith. Every time that we use our That's faith, true. it gives us strength and it gives us the ability to face what the tomorrow means. That's so good. But we also need to believe the word of God is true. That that to me is a big one. And and using your faith is believing the word is true. And believing true. the word is true is using your faith. And I and, want and it's an adventure of faith. And I also want to add, I think that I think the hardest time in my life was when my dad died. Mm -hmm. And it was totally unexpected and we had been standing on the word and he went to be with Jesus. And that's something that one day I'll understand. But at right now, I'm just saying, okay, God, I trust you. Yes. And I had a dear, dear minister friend say, Denise, now is the time to trust, to trust him. him. And and that's with any situation. It is. It whether is. you've lost someone that you truly do love and you were standing for, um, whether you are sitting there going with your business, God, I don't know how. How do you make up two months? How do you make it up? How do you make up three months? How do you do this? How do and you pay in, rent? How do you pay credit card bills? How do you pay your electricity? You? Yeah, and in those moments, those are the moments where you sit back and you rest in his trust, That's right. knowing that he is faithful that he is, he is good, he is just, he is full of mercy. And even if we don't understand, we know that he works all things out together he does. for the good of those who love and, and trust him. And we have to trust him. And we also need to understand that, yes, we have to use our faith. Yes. But the fact is, the world is in serious trouble. Perilous. Perilous. Please don't get those definitions Oh, again. I mean, I, okay. hard to take. I thought, how better that definition? It, because we were talking to someone the other day, and they said, this is just hard to believe. I right? Know. These are hard yeah. to believe times. It's the same thing. It's hard to take. It's hard to believe that it's even true. So we need to understand God has a thousand, billion, trillion, quadrulins, whatever you want to use. Ways. My math teacher. Yes. Now you know why she didn't make it <laughs> But you and I have all these ways that God will cause us to prosper. Am I right? Now you're making fun of me. My math teacher. That's right. It explains everything. It does. But we have been given supernatural ideas. Yes. And I know since all this began, God has given us ideas. It's He's true. also given us the ability to say, okay, this is the direction you need to go get it done. Or you wouldn't be watching us right it's now. It's so true. We were even talking about this. For a year, a year before we started Heart to Home Bible Study, yes. we every single day we would come together. We know that we're supposed to start a Bible study. Oh, we know that we're we supposed did. to do this. And we couldn't figure out the logistics. And, That's and right. it was just hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. This happened, and it was on the Sunday morning we did our first live stream. And Mom said, 
It was four o'clock in the afternoon. That's We're right. on at six o'clock Mountain Standard Time. That's right. And mom says, I think we should do a Bible study tonight. And Jesse and I were like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And it all worked out. And now we feel. You're stuck with us. You are stuck with yes. us. Yes. Now we feel like this is such a God-given idea. And we and will God's, continue this. Exactly. God's yeah. giving us ideas and he's giving you ideas. I told you uh, a couple of weeks ago in 2008 in the top 100 Fortune 500 companies. You did. Companies, that was our study we took. Yeah. In 2008. There are companies that were created in 2008 that are now in the top 100 Fortune uh, 500 companies. These are companies that were birthed out of famine. They were birthed out of lack. That's right. And so God is birthing out of you greatness right now in the midst of tough times. And, and I know that I'm getting ahead of myself, but we're going to be doing a special service next week. But yes. we're looking right now as buying some equipment to be able to do it. And you don't even know this. Dad and I were on the phone. I'm not on the board. They're not no. on the board. We, she doesn't do math. I can't do math. And so this that we're thinking about is something that's always been there. But they said churches are grabbing a hold of it. Wow. And so this company is prospering that thought that their days were numbered. Wow. Isn't, Isn't that funny? amazing? But I have a dear friend, and I know she's probably watching tonight, who had a really good job and still does. But all of a sudden, God dropped cookies into Ooh, her heart. That's pretty right? cool. I don't know who that friend is. <laughs> I know. But see, God has just allowed her and to it's find ideas. another. It is. It's ideas. And so let's just pray right now. I'm going to let you God do that. God is going to give you. He is the creator that's right. of heaven and earth. And Genesis 1-1 says that he creates. Yes, and he, he does. created back in Genesis 1 1. He is the creator today as well. And he, he created you in his image. Amen. And so you have creative ideas. So, Father, right now we just yes. pray creative ideas yes. over those who are watching and, and listening. Father, I thank you for ingenious ideas yes. that you were downloading into their spirit that you were giving them opportunities and ways and means to take tough times and turn it into prosperous times. And we thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. They are problem solvers, problem solvers. in the name of Jesus. City takers Amen. in Jesus' name. I love solving problems. Oh, I do too. That's awesome. That's just something that, that's like, I think we can do this. I, I want to, what was it, MacGyver? That would take a band-aid. I never, I never watched the show. You can let me know. But he would have a band-aid like and a toothpick. And, and he would make things. So yeah. God is giving us the ability. The MacGyvers. So He's pulling up the A MacGyver new generation. And Michelle, I'm going to pause because we're talking about the world is in serious trouble. I didn't realize this. The other day we were talking to some graduates that are graduating this year in 2020. 2020. And our heart breaks for them. Mm -hmm. But I was told, which I didn't realize, and I know you probably had, the year they were born was the year that the towers were struck mm -hmm. and that the terrorist attack came on our nation. So these guys, I just feel like this is a chosen generation, and we're yes. going to get into that in a little bit, but they were a born on into them. them in the midst of a shutdown. Of chaos. And because perilous. we were traveling during that time. Yeah, and everything and got we shut, down. shut we were shut down. We were supposed to be on a plane that day yes. and something got changed. So we were blessed in the sense that we didn't get shut into a city. Yeah. But these kids were actually born into a year of a shutdown. Mm -hmm. And here they are graduating from high school. And everything's shut down. Well, and, and if you are part of the 2020 graduating class, we are praying for we you. Are. We're praying for your kids and your loved one. Jesse's brother is actually part of the 2020 graduating class. And we have a lot of kids And there's the a area. lot of, of our youth group who's a part of that, that graduating class. And so we know that there's a calling on there your life. There is. There is a huge calling. And Satan, he is just angry. They're, he's angry at this generation. Yeah. It's it's really amazing. And so we're we're just standing in the gap and we encourage you to do the same. Okay, so the world is in serious trouble. We've already discussed that, but I want you to turn to John seventeen sixteen. Hallelujah. John I was there and seventeen then, sixteen. And then I got off track with your okay. first, second Timothy. Okay, John chapter seventeen and verse sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. It says they, that would be you, are not of the world, even as I am not of it. He's not of the world. He's not of the world. So we become separated from the world as we grow more into the word. Right. And we're going to get into what world we're in. Mm, okay. So Colossians chapter 1. I think I had you reading that one as well. I Colossians so, yes, chapter 1 verses 12 through 14. By all means, 
Get your Bible. Look at this. I know you're doing an NIV. Yes. I have the Living Bible, but I want you to hear what this has to say. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12, it says, In giving joyful thanks to the Father. So we see that we're maintaining an attitude of gratitude no matter what's going on around us. No matter what. Uh, It says, Giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Verse 13. For there he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, and he has brought us into the kingdom of his dear son whom he loves. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of our sins. So we're looking at being translated. Amen. We're being transferred. Now we all of un- and into. Right. We are translated from the kingdom of darkness yes. into his kingdom of his dear son. And that happens at salvation. That's exactly right. But we see that he is again and again and again taking us out of the system of this world right. and he's putting us into the kingdom system right. and the kingdom mindset and the kingdom prosperity. And it's That's right. It's, it's a transformation and it's also, as you said, it's a transportation. It is a transportation, but it's a transference. And That's good. We understand that when when we go to our bank and we say, I want to transfer funds from one place yes. to another. But translated is the word that is used in the Greek. And so I'm going to tell you what translated means. I hope it's better than your parentless. It is. Because <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> it means to transfer, okay. to be carried away. I mm. like that one. Song of Solomon. To remove from one place to another. Wow. So that's what happens at salvation. Mine was at the age of seven. Yours was? I was four. Okay. I had to think for a second. <laughs> you were transferred or translated yeah. from the kingdom of darkness to Thank the kingdom you. of his dear son. Oh, yeah. And so we need to understand that we have already been delivered. Say wow. that with me. We, we have, have already, already been, been delivered. delivered. That means you're not living in the darkness. That means you're not living in the world. Hallelujah. You're not in the kingdom of darkness. We have a new kingdom. That's so good. We're in the kingdom of his dear son. A kingdom that I will never it. pass away. Okay, Amen. so I'm going to read verse 13 out of the Amplified. Okay. It says, The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control Mm. and the dominion or power of darkness. And he has transferred us until the kingdom of the son of his love. Wow. We've already been delivered. We've been delivered. We don't have to ask, God, I don't want to have to deal with this. I don't want to have to work with this. We, oh my goodness. Stop moving. moving. We'll just... We'll just do that. <laughs> I'll just look at what I mean. I'm sorry. It's a cheese platter. Oh, okay. It's a che- well, it, I got it at Costco, but it's a cheese platter. Okay, well, I didn't realize and it was I movable. Need, I needed the height for the oh, camera. Okay. We're also set designers. <laughs> yes, we are. Really good ones at that. So, we need to understand, we've been translated. Like we've this, been transferred. Like, this. like Transfers. this was, you know, and it's really the truth. You can say, here we are looking at the kingdom of darkness. And now we're the kingdom of light. And now we're in the kingdom of light. And it's this too can be yours for 1999. <laughs> no, it's not. Do not do that. <laughs> but <clears throat> this is truly the way it is. It is a reversal from where you are to where you need to be. Amen. But I also want to put this in there. Please do. Okay. <laughs> Trying to get it really a sin. Okay. okay, you can still remain in the kingdom of darkness by being a Christian. And you're going to say, Ooh, how is that? Okay. okay, okay, break this down. If I continue to talk in fear, talk in doubt, yeah. talk the way the world talks, guess which kingdom there. I'm going to stay in. Well, and the reason why is you might be spiritually transferred. That's right. But mentally, and, and the word says that we're to transfer have a, a renewal of our mind, have a That's transformation right. of our That's mind. That's exactly right. Our mind is all of a sudden stuck in the world's principles and kingdoms and thoughts. That's right. And our world has to exemplify the kingdom in which I'm living. Yeah. And a double-sided uh, man is unstable in all of their that ways. That means you're flippy floppy and you're not going to be well in yeah. any area. You, you got to be stable. So <laughs> we can talk like we're in darkness. Yeah. We can talk like we're in sickness. We can talk like we're in lack because that's what darkness is. Yeah. 
darkness is lack, it's poverty, it's shortage, but we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? That's so good. So we need to watch what comes out of our mouth because what comes out of our mouth is what is in our heart. heart. So if I'm talking about doom and gloom, then all I am doing is transferring myself back into the kingdom of and darkness. And you don't want to go there. Oh, heavens you, no. You, you have been so set free. Jesus endured the cross. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he gave them to us. And he gave them to us. And That's we right. have the freedom to choose where we're going to reside. That's right. And we can't be living in two different locations. Can't live in two worlds. And 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 straddling the seesaw fence of, of the world and, and the kingdom principles. So it's time to get off that seesaw. And just firmly plant ourselves in the kingdom of God. That's so true. Now, did I give you First Peter two nine? I thought I did. I I think I do. I think you do. Yes, I because do. Because this goes with the generation of those that are graduating. Mm, First Peter two, and verse nine. nine. Wow, class of twenty twenty. You right. are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. That, that. is you. That is you. Any graduate, class of 2020, you, the generation, have been called out of darkness and have been firmly planted in the kingdom of light because God has a purpose on your life. Yes, he does. There's been so much pushback on this generation, on this coming generation. That's right. And I, Jesse and I were even talking about this. What Esther is in this generation? What Joshua is in this generation? What David, what Daniel, what Paul, what, what Timothy is in this generation that is terrifying the enemy? And you know what? You are called to be the Esther of this generation. And I'm going to add this to it because I'm the older generation. God put something inside of you for mm. you to stand in 2020. Wow. And you say, I'm too old. Mm -hmm. There's no way. He's already passed me by, and he's going to let this generation do it. You know, Caleb yeah. asked for the mountain in 80. There's no retirement plan with God. There's no There's no sit back and relax That's with right. God. So if you're 80 or and above, just realize that he's called you Amen. for this day as well. Amen. So there's, you know, yes, we want to encourage the graduates, but yeah. you've graduated into the kingdom of his dear son. There's a pushback on, on all of us yes, there right is. now. And God is declaring over us that, that he is delivering you out of darkness and he is firmly planting you, rooting you deep into the kingdom of light. That's good. That's it's good. amazing what God's and, doing. And I was thinking again before we came on air, um, Michelle has been through a couple of hurricanes. I know oh, Katrina. Yeah. I need a shirt. Like I, I have survived. survived. Yes, Katrina. But, but Katrina, you do remember Ivan? That was another one. Kind you... of, yes. I remember that kind of a random story. My dad came to me and he said, okay, we're evacuating and you need to take a possession that means a lot to you. And he gave me a, a black garbage bag mm -hmm. and my possessions that I took were all my stuffed animals. That was her possession. I was seven and it was, or eight and it was... She was probably something. 13, but I won't tell you that. But <laughs> but I'm just saying, you're looking at... No, I need to been... Google. <laughs> when was I been? <laughs> Sorry. I know, get me choked up. But I had Camille, which is in you 69. Frederick, which was in 79. I don't remember when Ivan was. Katrina was before we moved from Mobile to here. But Sorry. whenever you had a major hurricane that would hit you, and Mobile had a couple... Um, you would be without power for three weeks. That means you would lose the the freezers, the refrigerator. You couldn't flush your toilets. It was awful. Uh, it was awful. And you had no air conditioning in the middle of June, July, August, or September. So hot. It was super, super hot, and you had to clean up debris outside of your yard. But what would happen was, and, and this is what I was thinking about. Not the stuffed animals. <laughs> Not the stuffed animals. But you would go into a room when it first first happened and you had no electricity and you would immediately switch on the light. Just like muscle memory. It was just, oh my gosh. And then you'd go, oh, we have no power. And then you would complain and then you would go into another room and you ah, flick on the light. Ah, okay. But there came a point after the three weeks that you didn't flick on the light. You would walk in and you would just do your stuff in the dark in the dark 
But then when the power would come on, do you want to know? You sometime would go into a room you and would, would turn, turn it, on. it on. It took me about two weeks to get used to turning the light back on. And that, unfortunately, is the way we become with our lives with God. Well, I was watching something the other day, and they said the same thing happens with prisoners. Really? Because with a prisoner, I didn't know this. I've never been in prison. Yes. Um, aren't you proud of me? I'm so um, proud of you, But yes. when you walk to a door, you have to stop for it to buzz open to get okay. permission. And they said, you can always tell someone who's been fresh out of prison because they'll walk to a door and they'll stop. And then they wait for it to open up. And it's that same thing. You're, you're trained in darkness. You're, you're trained, trained in darkness. You're trained in, in being held back. And it's that same principle. And we need to realize that we've been translated. Yeah. We've been transferred. Out of prison. And, but out we can't of go back. We yeah. can't go back because if we do, we're going to be willing to sit in darkness. Yes. Even though there's the opportunity to switch on the light, to turn it on, as, as we say, you either turn it on or you cut off the lights in the cell. Yeah, we say cut off the light. Cut off. Cut off. my crazy. But the whole purpose is don't be willing to continue to walk in darkness yes. when you've been given the ability to be translated to his kingdom. Well, and so many of us, we're imprisoned in darkness. Yes, we we're are. We're absolutely trapped in that place of darkness. And God is saying, you know what? Turn on the light and walk through the door That's that right. I have for you That's right. and get out of that entrapment. And it's it's to me that hurricane just came back and hit me so hard mm. <clears throat> because we are given the ability yes. to be able to be in the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom yes. of light. Okay, let's look at Psalms chapter 9. You didn't give me this one. I that. didn't give you this I will one. turn there. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 9. Verses 9 through 10, we're talking about we're not subject to the times. Wow. And I'm telling you, you're not subject to the Corona 19 times. Amen. That is not where you are because sickness, disease, infirmity is not where his light is. Yes. Okay, so, so let's listen. Did you want me to read this one? No, or? I'm going to oh. do it. I've got an Amplified. I love Amplified. It's awesome. Okay, Amplified. It says, the Lord also will be a refuge and a high tower for the oppressed. A refuge and a stronghold in times of trouble. Then it goes wow. on and defines it. High cost. That's a sign mm -hmm. of trouble. Mm -hmm. Destitution and destruction. And they will know your name who have experienced and acquainted themselves with your mercy. They will lean on you and confidently put wow. their trust in you. That's what we talked about earlier. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you, inquire of, and for... You, on the authority of God's word and the right of their necessity, will be made strong. That is so Isn't that good? That's amplified. I, I love, love how it. it says that we'll lean on him in confidence. That's right. You well, know, that's who else you're going to lean on. You have to lean on your beloved. And if you've ever looked at Song of Solomon, you see that he is your beloved and that we're to lean on him. And when we lean towards God, we're leaning towards heaven. That's we're right. going to see heaven lean towards us. And normally when you lean, you, you're putting your ear towards yes. them. And that's what I think of when I when it says lean to him. You're it's like, listening. I'm listening to you. Yeah, we're both you know, we're leaning. leaning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we need to understand we're not subject yes. to what is being said, what is being done. Even the decisions that are being made right now in our nation. Because some of us say, well, I don't want this. I don't like the way it is. You know what? We are not in any way subject to those decisions. We are subject only to the kingdom of God. And so we also need to understand that even though these times are difficult, even though they may be that they're being governed by, um, by an economy that we don't desire to be a part of, we are under a new economy. Amen. And that economy is the kingdom of God. Amen. I love that. His economy is so much higher and greater. And, and like we started out this Bible study, we're not just talking about financial prosperity. That's right. God is so much more than money. That's we are right. talking about prosperity of our health, prosperity in relationships, That's prosperity right. at our work, prosperity with our kids, with our city. That's we right. are talking a prosperous, abundant, flourishing overflowing blessing life and we've been given victory because we've been given the blood yes we've been given his name over anything that's lacking in our life mm -hmm. that's so good. you know if you need peace he's the one to run to if you have your joy that's been removed get it back Amen. you've been given victory and in the troubled times this is what i want you to get you will thrive 
and you will flourish. Hallelujah. This is the time. Let's let that get into our spirit. In the troubled times, we will thrive and we will flourish in you, Lord. That's right. Amen. And the reason is, is because we're in another kingdom. Amen. You know, I've had the opportunity of traveling, traveling uh, in Europe. And uh, I love my European people, but their toilet paper is horrible. <laughs> it was like it was paper. And I've kind of gotten to where that I'm you so like, glad. You like your fluffy Charmin. I like my Charmin, okay? But when I was there in England, yes. they told me, these are the things you're going to have to be used to because you're living in our nation. Yes. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is a dear friend that I met that was in England got me a roll of Charmin toilet paper. And I traveled with toilet paper. I know you may think that's silly, because oh, even you though- were, You were ahead of the times. I was, but I'm telling you okay. that even though I was in another kingdom, the kingdom of Europe- She had her American TV. <laughs> I had my American source, and I want to tell you, I know it's a terrible example, that I know you can awful. use that, but I'm telling you, no matter, even if your kingdom is in the kingdom of, of his dear son, you will prosper. That Even if was, it's a toilet paper. That was the worst thing I've ever I heard know, but I thought about that. I had a dear friend that gave me a roll of toilet paper and he I thought it was the rudest. You no, it was a woman. Oh, so <laughs> never mind, that doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> he's gonna lift you up. I'm gonna ignore her. Uh, he's gonna That's lift terrible. you up in all situations. No matter what the downturns are, no matter what the roads are like, God is going to lift you up. He's going to prosper you because he's cut covenant with you. Amen. He can cut you, covenant. Why can you, you find another scripture so I can stop? Proverbs. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Oh, my word. I asked this earlier, and I'm going to ask you again. Does anyone else have like a million and one pieces of paper in there? I don't know. I do. I write all my scriptures out, so. Yeah, you're you're good. I just have notes everywhere. Okay, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. And you would like for me to read this? If you would, please. Okay, Proverbs 10, 22. <clears throat> it says, The blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. Now, I'm going to stop right here and say, you don't work, you don't eat. Right. You don't work, you don't eat. However, you do not have to have that strain, pain, what am we going to do? Absolute chaos, pull my hair out, panic over finances, health, prosperity. That's right. Abundance, restoration, family situation. Because we're not under the curse, we're under the blessing. Yes. And so we are not to live life panicked. And it says it there. Again, I'm going to say it. We're not under the curse, we're under the blessing. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Yes. Now, I'm not rich if she's going to hell. Mm, I'm not rich good. if grace is sick. Yeah. I'm not rich if I don't have the provisions to complete the vision. Yeah. So you have to understand rich it's, is everything. It's all encompassing. It's the okay. blessing of the Lord. But again, you don't have to live a life in panic. That's that's toil. I'm in painful <clears throat> inner anguish over tomorrow over COVID-19, over family situation, over life. You don't have to live life that way. And I love this because this is a scripture that I've quoted my whole life. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And as adds, as King James says, no sorrow with it. Meaning somebody doesn't have to die to make me rich. Yeah, it's wealth without sorrow. It's wealth without sorrow. And I've heard this said time and time again from different ministers. Like you just said, what good is it for me oh, to yeah. have a trillion dollars but my family isn't saved. Going what to good is it to have a trillion dollars, but I have no peace in my life? That's right. So it's all encompassing for the blessing of It's the because we're not under the curse, we're under the blessing. Amen. And it's also because I don't live in the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah, you have been I translated. I do not choose to live in that place. You've been translated with your TP. That's right, and I thank God for good TP. Amen. But I can choose even if I'm saved, to yes. live in that darkness. And we don't want to do that. And we don't want to do that. No. You have been given the opportunity. He said, I put before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. It gives you the answer to the quiz. Amen. But you and I, if we want to stay sick, stay broke, stay depressed, stay in the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. Because in the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light, we are planted with Jesus. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to bloom. Flourish. We're going to flourish. 
Now, I'm horrible with planting. They'll tell you, no green thumb here. But I will tell you, when we are planted in the kingdom of God, you we will flourish. flourish. No matter what your education is, no matter what your background is, no matter who your mama and daddy are, I'm telling you, we'll flourish because mm -hmm. Jesus is in our boat and we're going to the other side. I'm putting Amen. all my sermons <laughs> into one. Amen. That's so good. I'm just letting you know, it is time for us to flourish. Amen. I'm also going to tell you, it's time. Yes. I'm so thrilled with, with the it's comments. It's been fantastic. I will say this real quick. Um, if you have asked for one and you have not received one, yes. please let us know because we've got... All the different all the comments comments and, and messages and everything and sometimes they may have gotten the email wrong and we might have typed it, it in wrong or whatever so yeah. if you have not received it and you know that you asked for it please again let us know but just uh, give us your email or address in a private message or you can comment it if you would like oh and cool. we'll they can send to it to my hotmail mm -hmm. h the number two h m dot org <clears throat> I'm going to say that again, h2hm.org. But we need to know, I have victory over death and receive the manifestation of the love of God. Amen. I am expecting the greatest blessing ever today because it says, give us this day our daily, bread. our daily bread. So we are to expect his blessings every day Amen. because great grace, plus I have a granddaughter named Grace, is upon me. And so okay. if you want this, by all means, let us please know. let us know. Let and then Michelle, know. we wanted to share with them about Mother's, Mother's day. day. So we wanted to make it absolutely clear. We'll be probably making some more posts and videos just to make it clear. Next Sunday, which is May the 10th, which is Jesse's birthday <gasps> and Mother's Day. So exciting. Shh. I have to share the special day. Anyways. Oh, oh my goodness. So terrible. Um, but Mother's Day is May 10th. We're having a park and praise. Park and praise. Park and praise service at the paintball field for local uh, locals. Like, don't come drive from uh, For our wherever. church family, this local. But for our local church family. Yeah. Uh, so that means that we will not be live streaming on Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m., However, we will be pre-recording a service and posting it for our online uh, community and our new church family who's right. been watching online. We're so glad that you're a part yes. of our church family. Uh, we will be posting that and making that available on Sunday at noon, right. Mountain Standard Time, as well as continuing with Kids Place, Youth Group, right. Midweek We're not Bible slowing studies. down. We're just adding. We are adding an in-person park and praise. We've been... With uh, social distancing. Yes. With social distancing. And we will be parking in a certain way. We have been given permission by the county commissioners and city it's officials. The sheriff department. Sheriff department, police yeah. department. 100% safe. 100% um, to code and up to standard. However, we will not be live streaming on Sunday morning because it is in the middle of a field. A field. So we, we're not going to be able to guarantee a good live stream. So that's why we are going to pre-record and post it at noon Mountain Standard Time on May 10th, which is Mother's right. Day. And so, and I just want to tell you, I can't give you food. This is the hardest thing for me. Food is her love language. And so, I'm just encouraging you, bring a picnic basket. If you want, you bring can Bring lawn your, chairs. You can only stay outside of your car. So, so you can sit to the front of your you car. You can sit to the front of your yeah. car. You can bring your own food if you want. If you uh, want. To the park and, and pray. And if you don't, that's fine. That's completely fine. We're not going to have any social gatherings as far as like... I will wave at meet you. And greet. We're talking about maybe doing like a meet and greet honk. Like, oh, is that what you're thinking? That's what I'm thinking. Oh my heavens, Who only knows? my daughter. Honk honk. Okay, okay, honk honk. But we will be giving out packages for our kids, kids to have place. in the car. Yes. And we will make certain that those are sanitized and put together yes. so that they're safe for the kids. And then for my moms and my ladies. All ladies will be receiving. A special gift. Yes, the perfect perfectly safe special gift. So. That's right. So everything's been sanitized and put together. Yes. If you want more information, then by all means, contact us. Contact us and let us uh, know. Because this is not, well, that would be yes. next Sunday, May the May 10th. 10th. Yeah, that's hard May to believe. 10th. That's Mother's Day. It's crazy. I hope I'm getting a big present. <laughs> so, uh, I'll get her some Charmin. <laughs> give me TP. Okay. But life is good. God mm -hmm. is good. And we've been translated, mm -hmm. transferred, carried over into from the darkness to the light Amen. so don't be in the darkness anymore and this is an exciting uh, study that you're going to be talking we're going to be talking about the separation right? effect how that we've been separated yes. and we don't have to be in that world unless we choose to it's Amen. a choice good. so thank you guys so much for joining us we love you guys and we can't say thank you enough
And we'll see you very soon. Thank you.